Hey guys, it's Ashley, and I just saw Beauty and the Beast, the movie, yesterday, and I'm having a lot of emotions about it, pretty much all good, really, really good, and since I'm really immersed in these emotions and feelings over the movie, I thought I would go ahead and do the Beauty and the Beast book tag today, and I'm actually going to do two separate book tags and combine them into one. Um, I'll let you know when the first tag stops and when the second tag starts. And I wasn't actually tagged by anybody to do this, but since I just saw it yesterday and am feeling all the feels, I figured I'd go ahead and do the tag. And there are a total of 18 questions since I'm combining two tags into one, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and try to keep these answers as short as possible. The operative word here being try. So. Let's just go ahead and get into it. And this first tag I saw on Sylvia Kay's booktube channel, so I'll leave a link to her video down below where she does the tag, as well as the original creator's video as well. So the first question is Belle, who just wants more than this provincial life. Tell about a book that takes you to another place, and for this one I have picked Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, because this book absolutely transports me to Middle Earth. It is so all-encompassing and so deep and rich, and because there are so many different languages and histories and characters involved in it, you really can't help but escape into it, or I can't at least, so I'm picking this book for this question because it's superb involvement and world building just really makes me feel completely encompassed and involved in it and that's why I'm choosing it for this question. Number two is Beast. Choose a book whose cover doesn't match their story. Obviously I'm going with Vampire Academy for this because what is this? Like, this needs... I, why? It does not reflect what's inside the story. I have used this book for this question before, and similar questions, and I am going to keep doing it because this really bothers me. The book is not a steamy, weird romance that happens in some gates. That's not what this book is about, so just make new covers. Number three is Maurice, the eccentric but lovable father. Choose a book that was out of your comfort zone or normal reads but you ended up really loving. And for this I'm choosing The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. I usually don't read biography books or memoirs. I've maybe read a total of like six in my whole life um, and this was one of them. I really enjoyed it mostly because it read like a fiction, honestly. Um, the way the writing was and the way the story progressed um, even though it was a true story, it felt like it was a fictionalized story just in its color and the way it was told and I ended up really really loving this. I read it for book club and it has been one of my favorite book club selections we've done so far, as you can see by all my sticky notes and it's just really great. If you're trying to get into biography, I would highly recommend this book. It's super short, it reads like fiction and I highly recommend it. And like I said, I don't normally read biography, but I ended up really, really loving this, even though it's out of my normal comfort zone for reading. Number four is Mrs. Potts. Choose a character that takes care of others the way that a mother might. And for this, I'm choosing Miss Peregrine from the Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children series. And this almost feels like a cop-out because, you know, the series is called Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children. And her whole job as an embryon is to take care of children, so it almost feels like a cop-out, but nevertheless it fits this question because she is trusted with the care of peculiar children as an embryon um, who is a peculiar that can turn into a bird and create uh, loops in time. So she has those abilities and she has to protect all these children and she definitely does so. She does it in a strong, fierce, sometimes strict way, but definitely still motherly. Number five is Chip, what is your favorite children's book? And I really wanted to go with my standard answer of Anne of Green Gables because that probably is my like favorite all-time children's book, but I thought I'd dig a little deeper and maybe go even a little bit younger. And I picked If You Give a Mouse a Cookie because I read this book so much when I was a little girl, like a really, really little girl. I used to know it by heart when I was a kid, probably like four or five years old, maybe even younger. I knew it by heart because it was read so often to me and I read it myself. And so this was just my absolute favorite. I hold a lot of memories because of this book and all of my family has a lot of memories with it because it was read so often because I just couldn't get enough of it when I was a very very little girl. Number six is Gaston. Choose a character who is over the top in his or her arrogance. And for this I'm choosing Trey from Confessed by Colleen Hoover. 
If you haven't read Confess by Colleen Hoover, I would maybe skip to the next question and I'll leave the time that I move on to the next question right here so that you can go ahead and skip forward to that time. But I'm choosing Trey because if you read it, you know that he thinks that he has everything in his grasp. He thinks he has Auburn and Auburn's son and he thinks that he has Owen out of the way and he just doesn't and it's just, it's so nice to see him fall and I... I'm 100% on board for it because he just, I mean, and he's a cop and he like takes advantage of the fact that he's a policeman and I just, you know, I was so satisfied with that portion of the ending because it was just too much. He had way too much arrogance, honestly. Number seven is Lumiere. Choose a smooth, talking, swoon-worthy Casanova character. And for this, I am obviously choosing Reyes from the Charlie Davidson series because I am trash and cannot go through a book video without mentioning the series in some way. But Reyes definitely knows what he's doing and knows his pickup lines and knows how to seduce his woman and other women accidentally. And I have to pick him for this question. And number eight is Cogsworth, a character who kicks charge and is the voice of reason. And for this, I'm choosing Eleanor Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. I'm just going to hold this up for one second. This is my copy of Sense and Sensibility I have. It's a tiny little two-parter set. That's all I have right now because I lent out my other version of Sense and Sensibility. But Eleanor Dashwood is the eldest sister of the three Dashwood sisters in Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. And she definitely takes charge. She's the one who finds them a home. She's the one who keeps the house running day to day when they don't really have any servants or any men around in their house. She's the one who really keeps up with the household and she just keeps everything afloat. She's the voice of reason almost to her own detriment at times because she doesn't let herself be happy. She just keeps things as reasonable and straightforward and um, easy for everybody else basically as possible. So I'm definitely choosing her for this, which is great because in the movie Sense and Sensibility, she's played by Emma Thompson, who plays Mrs. Potts in the Beauty and the Beast movie that was just released. And so now I'm moving on to the second Beauty and the Beast tag, which I didn't see on one particular blog, but I saw on multiple blogs just all over the internet when I was looking for the Beauty and the Beast book tag. I found this one as well and really liked these questions, so I thought I would include them as well. Number one is Tale as Old as Time, a trope theme or setting that you'll never get tired of. And for this, I'm choosing LGBTQ plus characters who start off as friends and sort of end up falling in love with each other. And I saw one of the blogs I saw this tag on put this answer for this question, and I honestly really agree with it. So I'm just going to use that as my answer too just because I really find it great to have not only one main character who is LGBTQ+, but also a second one, and to have their story be the focus and be the thing that is developed so much, and it's nice to see them come into themselves and realize their feelings and who they are and just, you know, accept who they are and find love. I just think that's so great and it's great representation and it means that a lot of readers out there will get stories that they can relate to. So I really like that trope and really want to see more of it because I'm sure uh, that there are people out there who really would like to see more of that and feel like they would identify with it if they found it more often in books. So I'll never get tired of that trope or theme and I'd love to see it more in literature. Number two is Belle, a book that you bought for its beautiful cover that ended up being beautiful on the inside too. And for this I'm choosing Tales of the Peculiar, which is by Ransom Riggs. This is really akin to Tales of Beale of the Bard, which is in Harry Potter canon itself. It's an actual text that takes place in Harry Potter canon that J.K. Rowling technically wrote, but that somebody else actually wrote in the Harry Potter universe. Similarly, this is a collection of tales of peculiars throughout the ages of history that is compiled by somebody else in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children universe that is technically written by Ransom Riggs, but is actually put together this particular version by one of our peculiar children. Th that's why I like this, is one, because it just is full of peculiar tales, and I love that we get a little bit more in-depth to this universe because I feel like there's just so much to explore. There's ages and ages of history of peculiardom that we could talk about and this is just the tip of the iceberg. And some of these stories just resonate really, really well and are absolutely beautiful and have great morals and just the cover of it is so gorgeous and it's got this cloth binding and this um, bookmark in it and just on the inside it's got these end papers and there are illustrations in it that are technically wood etchings 
and the whole thing is just beautiful, including the words itself. They are amazing stories. I really recommend this. I ended up giving it 5 out of 5 stars when I read it in October, and I cannot recommend it enough. Number 3 is Beast, a book that you didn't expect much from but ended up surprising you, and for this I'm choosing the Gallagher Girl series by Ali Carter. This is the first one. I tell you that I love you, but then I have to kill you. These are really cute. All of them are almost this short. This is the shortest one in the series, but the rest of them are nearly this short. This one tops out at 280 pages with some really big print, and these are so cute. These are for like 13, 14 year olds, like really young, young adult readers, and they're just adorable and hilarious. They are about this girl, Cammie, and her group of best friends who go to the Gallagher Academy of, it's basically a spy school. This is just an amazing series that goes crazy places eventually but this first book I thought was just gonna be fluffy and nothing but it ended up being really great like I have no qualms about this book and it is honestly one of my favorite like cutest young adult reads and I read like three of them in a day or something they're so easy to get through I can't really tell you what they're about because you have to read it because drama unfolds and so you kind of have to read it to know the drama but I honestly really recommend these. I think they're adorable. So if this sounds at all interesting to you, definitely give it a shot. Like I said, the first one's so small. It's so worth it to at least try it. It's so easy. Number four is Gaston, a book that everyone else loves that you don't. And for this, I'm picking Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I will always choose this book for questions like this because I don't get it. I don't like this book at all. I have a whole rant about it in quite a few videos and I'll leave a link to one of them around this video so that you can check it out if you're interested. Did not like Anna. I found her to be really whiny. Her and St. Clair's relationship was not great. It was not healthy. It was mean in some ways to other individuals and it was just dumb and I didn't feel any of the feelings people talk about about feeling like they were transported to a new world and traveling and cutesy and in love like I didn't feel any of that I just did not like it and thought it was really poorly done and that is the end of my rant number five is LeFou a psychic you can't help but love more than their counterpart and for this I'm picking Professor Lyle from the Parasol Protectorate series by Gail Carriger he's just on my mind right now because I just finished book three yesterday and Professor Lyle is the beta of the werewolf pack in this series and Lord McCoon is the alpha in this series basically this is a steampunk Victorian paranormal series that is amazing and has everything that you ever want out of a series and I am not going to stop talking about this series for quite a while so get used to it. Professor Lyle is amazing. He is dear. He is sweet. He is hilarious. He is smart. He's everything. He calms down Lord McCoon who I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to keep swooning over but at this point I just find Professor Lyle to be way more interesting so that's why I'm choosing him over his alpha. Number six is Miss Potts, Chip, Lumiere, and Cogsworth. Name a book that got you through a really difficult time and for this I'm choosing the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series by Anne Brasheris, more specifically the second Summerhood of the Sisterhood. As you can tell I have worn this book through so bad. It has been through the ringer. I read this in high school and it was really important to me, it really grounded me, really made me feel safe, and I really attached to it because it just made me feel, like I said, just like I was in a safe place and happy in a time when I really, really wasn't. There's was a lot of really bad stuff going on in my life, and I won't go into those things because they're very personal, but this book was my everything. This was my Bible. I read it over and over again. As soon as I would finish it, I would just start it over again right away and I got through some really tough times because of this book and I will be forever grateful for its existence. Number seven is something there that wasn't there before. This is a book or series that you weren't into when you first picked it up but got better towards the end and for this I'm picking When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McBeamer and the reason I'm picking this is because when you first start this book it's super wordy because it's magical realism so it does a lot of wordy but beautiful world building and character descriptions and settings and everything like that. So the first 30% of this book was really hard to get through because it just got so lengthy and wordy. But it's so worth it to continue with this book because it's absolutely exquisite. All of the elements of it are so well crafted. The characters and the magic in it, the magical realism, the blending of the two is just beautiful. And even though it's wordy, so many of those words and sentences are just beautiful to read and I had to keep reading them over and over again to fully like put them in my brain so I remember them for a long time so by the end of this book I was just feeling so 
happy that I had read it and that's why I'm choosing it for this book. I actually did a full review of it because I got it from NetGalley to do a review of it so I will leave a link to my full Goodreads review in the description box below. And number eight is Be Our Guest, a fictional character that you would love to have dinner with and for this I'm picking Lady Jane Grey from My Lady Jane. I can't stop thinking or talking about this book. I read it about two weeks ago. I finished the audiobook version of it which was hilarious and fantastic and utterly perfect. Five out of five stars but Lady Jane specifically was so headstrong and such a bookworm and such an advocate for women and for them being powerful and I would just love to have dinner with her and chat and I feel like we would be great friends and we could talk about how women should run the world. And that is it. That is the Beauty and the Beast book tag times two. So I'm really sorry for the length of this video. I try to keep it as short as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking through it with me. And feel free to do this video and consider yourself tagged. If you want to do it, I'm not going to tag anybody specific. Thanks you guys so much for watching and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Happy reading!